Samsung has a common problem on three-year-old LCD TVs which is now rearing its ugly head. Namely, the capacitor problem. You can look up capacitor plague on Wikipedia for more information. I'll show you how I fixed it, thanks to all of the amazing people on YouTube who posted videos of their fix as well. Here is the back of my TV. It is a 40-inch Samsung LCD model number LND4061FX-XAC. It was manufactured around 2006 but we bought it in 2007. The TV started having a slow power up as early as 2009 but it didn't become a huge delay until recently. Now it can't take up to 5 minutes for the TV to power up, with repeated clicking sounds of the red light being heard. Many people have complained of the same problem and it is all over the internet. After checking these symptoms online I found a number of excellent YouTube videos explaining the problem. I wanted to share my experience so that others can fix it as well. It takes only a few minutes and costs less than $5. You do need some basic electronic soldering experience. I took the back off the TV. All you need is a regular screwdriver. Unlike some other models, my TV model has no wires attached to the back so you can just remove it easily. Zooming in we see the power supply. Notice the top right corner which is where all of the faulty capacitors tend to have been found. Zooming in further, just as suspected we have two capacitors with black marks on top. These are not sharp pen marks. It is burned leaked electrolytic fluid. If you continue to use the TV eventually these capacitors will pop and damage the rest of the set so it is best that they be replaced now. Have a look here. You can see the two faulty capacitors next to the other two normal capacitors. The normal capacitors have flap tops and no black marks. At different angles you can see the bad capacitors are bulging on top. They definitely look rounded on top and have black marks showing they have leaked electrolytic fluid. I took a picture of the board connection so I'd remember where to put the wires back. Here is a tip for you. Take photos of everything along each step of the way so you can remember how everything was connected. Here is the other side so I know where the wires go and here is another close-up to show the wire connection looks like it says 2200 microfarads at 10 volts and 105 Celsius rating. I read on another blog that the main board uses a 12 volt bus so the problem may also be that Samsung underrated these capacitors in their design. After taking the power board off, you can look on the back and see where they are soldered on. They are attached at position CM852 and CM853. Just make sure you remember the polarity. The side of the capacitor with the stripe that says minus goes to the minus part, and the other side goes to the plus. Here are the bad capacitors after desoldering, so I went to the store and they recommended these replacements. As with most of the tutorials and videos online, everyone suggests to increase the voltage but otherwise keep all the other specifications the same. In this case, I got 2200 microfarads with 105 Celsius rating but instead of 10 volts I went up to 25 volts. Some recommend choosing low VSR type capacitors, but my local electronics supply shop couldn't find them. They also had smaller 16 volt but they were only rated at 85 Celsius. Since this is a power supply that is likely to get hot. I needed to get the larger 25 volt size which had 105 Celsius rating. So here they are. You can see the gray stripe with the minus sign on it and the short wire lead. And the long wire is the plus and that goes to the plus side. Now the only downside is the size of the replacement capacitors is much larger compared to the old ones. I couldn't find anything smaller. But fortunately they did fit. 
I tried to keep them away from the heat sink. Here they are again from another angle. My soldering job is not perfect, but it got the job done. Here I am assembling it all back together. All done and the TV is working. It will power up in five seconds. The cost of the two capacitors was $1.50 each, for a total cost of $3. Samsung does not want to fix these because it would cost them way more. However the whole experience and poor support from Samsung means I will never buy Samsung again.